First, it's been a safe place for women to trying to escape abuse for more than 30 years. In fact, last year alone, more than 5,000 women received help through the various services it offers. It's the Yellow Brick House. And with the population and demand growing each year, the organization will soon be opening the doors to a second location here in York Region, but not until a local resident with years of design experience gets her creative hands on the new space. Here's a sneak peek in this next report. This here, teal, is one of my favorite colors. This is the carpet. Teal, yellow, and even hot pink. These colors will soon be incorporated into this empty room, thanks to local designer Jennifer Brower. It's imperative that your surroundings uplift you in the way that you live in your home. It's, it's imperative for your mental health, for your well-being. That's why, since May, she and her team have donated hundreds of hours to help make the newest yellow brick house location in the southern part of York Region a home for women and children escaping abuse. When I came to see the space, um, it soon became evident to me that they required a little bit more than a couple of pieces of furniture. Um, so I asked if it's okay if I, you know, kind of help out. Uh, this is a really um, dear subject to my heart. It hits close to home for Jennifer, whose aunt suffered abuse. Now she's doing all she can to ensure the women and children who come here will not only feel safe, but at home. It's not a sterile environment, it's not a hospital, it is a shelter and it really is supposed to, you know, embrace you when you enter, um, give you a hug when you enter and a pat on the back when you leave. Oh wow, look at this, eh? And Yellow Brick House CEO Loris Horrenda couldn't agree more. I think a lot of people have an image that a shelter is like an institutionalized place where you have these cots and, 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 and beds and there's no privacy. And we find it extremely important that the women and children that come to us, that they're comfortable, that they consider this is not just a shelter, that this is our second home for them, this is a second chance. And you know, a lot of these women are coming from, from uh, family homes that are beautiful and coming to a shelter can be a very scary experience. So with the help of our volunteers who have a knack for design, for example, they're able to help us create an environment where these women and children will feel extremely comfortable and, and they will feel good about being here. We've been working very diligently with our volunteers to make this dream happen uh, because this is a life-saving venture for these women and children who are fle fleeing violent homes. They're not fleeing because they need a change in their life, they're fleeing because their lives are in danger. So just how does Jennifer plan on making this a cozy space? But I love blue, blue's calming. I didn't want to pick any colors that are loud. They're going to be, you know, invasive or intrusive. This needs to be, you know, bright and cheerful, yet calm and serene when they need that then serenity. This is what we're calling the mom's room. And in this room, um, there's basically going to be seating for up to eight people. So there's going to be an extra large sofa on this wall here, uh, four pivotal chairs, a really nice ottoman, everything very kind of soft to the touch, lovely luxurious fabrics, nice soft velvets and, and various patterns. So this is my favorite room in the house actually. Uh, this is what we're calling the great room. This is a multi-purpose room. It's for all of the, the residents, the moms and the children. There's going to be enough seating in this room. Uh, we propose for about 16, so we're really excited about that. You can get, a, you can get almost the whole capacity in this room based on our, uh, on our seating plans. Last year, Laura says they had to turn away 600 women and children at the shelter in the northern end of the region due to lack of space. She hopes this new addition will help change that. Currently in our shelter with 25 beds and 7 cribs, we're able to accommodate about 500 women and children a year. And we're hoping with our second location that uh, we're eventually probably not starting with 20 or 25 beds. We're going to start with less, about 17 beds and 3 cribs. Uh, however, we are uh, hoping those numbers will increase because even with the addition of the second shelter, we realize that with our population growth, the need is also growing. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping that we'll be able to accommodate at least another 400 women and children with this new facility. From wallpaper to blinds to flooring, Jennifer has all design aspects covered, but she's doing it without taking any money from the shelter. She says vendors have made it all possible, but she's looking for a few more dollars to add the finishing touches. You know, lamps for certain rooms or different things that um, would really be wonderful if we could have a little bit of financial support and just kind of really make this place a home. You know, it doesn't have to be a lot of money. If a thousand people donate a dollar, it's a thousand dollars. I think 
it is just so important to take it a step further and really just ensure that, you know, this is the best that we can put forward for them.